Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we're going over all 30 backgrounds for generic characters in the game. This guide is a follow-up to the Traits Guide, so if you missed that one and want to get the complete lesson on Traits in Total War 3 Kingdoms, there will be a link in the description below, so definitely go check that one out. And like the Trait Guide and our Skill Tree Guides for generic characters before, this guide is designed to help you make better decisions when recruiting and using characters in Total War 3 Kingdoms. My goal is not only to show you the full spectrum of all available backgrounds in the game, but also point out tips and tricks that you never knew before to add to your game the next time you play. So let's get started. The first thing we need to know is what backgrounds are in Total War 3 Kingdoms. Let's use these three starting characters from Sun Jian's faction as an example. First, we have the faction leader Sun Jian himself. He is a unique character in the game as he has his own portrait and model and is more importantly, he has a background called Tiger of Jiangdong. We can see here that this background gives him 20 points to expertise, 30 points to instinct, and 10 points to authority for a total of 60 point worth of stats. Aside from this, this background gives him additional level of resilience, thus allowing him to become wounded twice on the battlefield before technically dying. Additionally, he's given a wealthy background bonus that adds 50% to income from family estate if he is a faction leader, 25% extra movement range if starting in the turn in the friendly sea regions, and 6 extra morale to all units when attacking. Lastly, being the tiger of Jiangdong, he commands bravery and gets along with other characters who also commands bravery. Next, we have Huang Gai, who is what I will be calling a semi-unique character in the game. Semi-unique characters are characters with a unique background, but a generic character model and portrait. Huang Gai here looks like every other champion in the game, but we can see that his background is the Unreadable Warrior. This is a unique background that only belongs to him, and gives him 10 points of resolve, 15 points of instinct, and 5 points in authority, for a total of 30 points of stats. And if he is the Prime Minister, Heir, or Faction Leader, then he also grants the whole faction an extra 15 charge bonus for all spear infantry. Lastly, being the unreadable warrior also influences his personality, which makes him respect patience but dislike both carelessness and impulsiveness. Finally, we have Lady Wu, who represents the generic backgrounds that our guide will cover today. If we look at her background of being an outsider, we can see that it provides 5 points in cunning and 10 points in authority. Additionally, if this character is the Prime Minister, Heir, or Faction Leader, the whole faction will enjoy a 5% deduction to corruption. Lastly, outsiders disregard social ability. Now, the reason why Lady Wu is a generic character is not because she is not a historical character, as she is in fact the wife of Sun Jian. She is defined as a generic character here only because she does not have a unique portrait or character model, and her background is one that's shared by other generic characters in the game as well. So because these generic backgrounds are not unique, they will be the most available backgrounds on your characters in the game, as there are only a handful of unique and semi-unique characters available to you. This fact will become even more true in the late game, as many of the unique characters succumb to old age, leaving you with a roster filled with mostly generic characters. So hopefully this guide will introduce you to all 30 different types of generic backgrounds in the game and help you pick up a few tricks on how to better utilize these boring generic backgrounds to gain advantage in the game. So as shown here, this is the list of all 30 generic backgrounds. Each class has 6 backgrounds. What is not included here are the yellow turban backgrounds, which have different classes. We'll definitely have a separate yellow turban background guide in the future. Uh, especially now given the updates to the patch is showing that we're going to get more yellow turban DLCs in the future. But since for this guide, we're going to focus mainly on the base game. So let's just focus on the 30 listed here for the five character classes. To start, we'll look at the Sentinel class, where we'll find the backgrounds of Clerk, Guard, Lookout, Saboteur, Tax Collector, and Trader. A few things to note before we look at each one individually is that all these backgrounds provide 15 points of stat. And depending on the class the background belongs to, they will always provide at least 5 points of stats related to the class. For example here, 
Sentinels are related to expertise, so every trait here provides at least five points to expertise. Additionally, all other bonuses requires the character to be the prime minister, heir, or faction leader, and they are faction-wide bonuses, except for one background in every class that provides a spying bonus instead. For example, the saboteur background here in the Sentinel class provides 10 points to maximum cover when spying. Moving on, exactly two backgrounds in each class will also come with a unique assignment that is not available to any other characters in the game. Lastly, backgrounds along with traits play a big role in terms of your character's personality and thus their relationship or guanxi with other characters in the game. This would not really be a big focus for our guide here as we're mainly focused on the characters themselves and not their relationship with others. So going back to the six backgrounds for the Sentinel class, we can first focus on the Saboteur and Tax Collector here as they're the only two that provides 10 points in expertise. This is key for when you are looking for a high expertise Sentinel to become your administrators as that role is often the main function for Sentinels in the game. Next, let's look at the five backgrounds here. All five of these backgrounds have a faction-wide bonus that requires the character to be your prime minister, heir, or faction leader. Now clearly, your faction leader is probably never going to be a generic character unless something terrible has happened to your starting leader. And you don't have access to the prime minister role until very late in the game, so most likely we're looking for an heir, which can be either an adopted general or more commonly, a wife. Since we only have one slot to work with, the bonus should be a really good one. So let's take a look. First up, we have the Clerk. This background reduces construction time by two turns. For someone who enjoys command rebuilding like myself, this is a solid bonus. Being able to build your buildings faster allow you to gain benefits of higher tier buildings faster, but you're still limited by your lack of early game funding and restricted by reforms, as most of the higher tier buildings will be locked behind the reform tree. Next, we have Guard, which provides 9 morale when defending. This is pretty self-explanatory. I consider this bonus to be average or borderline bad, so I would not recommend this one at all. Next, we have Lookout, which adds 10 points to undercover network costs for enemy spies. Although this makes enemy spies action more expensive, the solution against being spied on is to recruit more carefully and this only slows down the enemy spy. So I think this bonus is pretty trashed here and should not really be considered. Next, we have the tax collector, which adds 15% income from industry. This is actually a pretty good bonus, especially in the late game, as industry income base values are very high in the game, but they lack multipliers. So a 15% bonus in the late game is a significant boost to your overall economy. But in the early game, this is pretty bad. Lastly, we have the Trader, which adds 15% to Trade Influence. This is the opposite of the Tax Collector. Trade Influence is great in the early and mid game when you have tons of friends to trade with, but in the late game, everyone's going to be fighting you. So unless you have developed a large network of vassals to be trade partners, this bonus is better early than late. But conversely, Trade Route based income is pretty low in the early game, so this is not a great bonus either way. So out of these five bonuses here, I can only recommend the Clerk and the Tax Collector. Moving on, we have the Saboteur background here, which is the only background without a faction-wide bonus, as it is the Sentinel's spying background. It adds 10 points maximum cover when spying. It's not a significant boost, but if you can be picky when recruiting spies, this is a useful bonus to consider, along with other traits like Quiet. Now, lastly, and most importantly, we're going to take a look at the two backgrounds that provides unique assignments, as assignment slots are much more available than heir and prime minister slots. Here, the saboteur unlocks black market investigation, and traders unlock surplus market. Black market investigation adds 50% to your trade influence for 15 turns. This is probably the best assignment if you're playing a trade-focused faction like Kongrong, but for everyone else, this is just an average assignment. The surplus market, however, is one of my favorite assignments as it boosts your commerce income by 50% and your industry income by 15% for 5 turns, at a cost of 6 reserve a turn. This is a nice combo boost, as most of your commerce income commanders will also have a nice industry income as well, and vice versa, 
as the private workshop make these two income sources complementary to each other. Next, we move on to the sixth background from the champion class, and they are bandit, farmer, filial and pious, procher, village chief, and wanderer. Once again, we'll highlight the backgrounds with the most resolve stat, which are the farmer and the wanderer, as they both increase resolve by 10 points instead of 5. Since the champion are your go-to generals that excel in dueling, extra resolve points provide extra health points for them. So wanderer is probably the best background for generic duelist here, as it also provides 5 points of instinct, which increases your attack. Now, the farmer is not terrible, as authority still provides morale boost for your retinue, so both are great for champions that you plan on bringing to your armies. Next, we'll go through the five backgrounds that provide faction-wide bonuses. First up is Bandit, which adds 15% ambush chance to all your armies. Personally, I hate how Fire Will does not work for range units in ambushes, so I'll be rating this bonus quite low. But I will acknowledge that a lot of people swear by ambush auto-resolve fights on higher difficulties. So this is not trash tier, but it is still a big investment if you are making the character your heir just for 15% extra ambush chance. Next we have the farmer background, which will increase your food production faction-wide by 20%. This is quite good, as food is an excellent trade resource and vital for building tall. It is also relevant throughout the game. So Farmer is definitely a background that I would keep an eye on. Next we have Filio and Pius, which adds 4 reserve faction wide. This background bonus is the definition of trash tier, as reserve level is completely useless in the game for the player. Nothing to say here, so let's move on. We have the Village Chief next, which adds 10% income to Peasantry. It's a really small boost, and Peasantry income multipliers are already readily available in the game from reforms, buildings, and population, so I would definitely not be spending such a precious air spot on just a 10% extra peasantry bonus. Lastly, we have the Wonder, which adds 2 starting rank for all polearm, infantry, and shot cavalry. It's not a bad bonus, but I don't think the extra stat gain from the 2 ranks justify giving up the air slot. So out of all 5 here, I can only recommend the Farmer. Moving on, we have the one background that provides a spying bonus. Here for the champion class, it's the Procher background, which once again adds 10 points to maximum cover. Once again, it's not a huge bonus, but if you're looking for a champion spy, then why not make it a Procher? Next up are the two backgrounds that provide unique assignments in the Farmer and the Village Chief. From the Farmer, we have Agriculture Development, which is one of the best assignments in the game. It gives you 15 turns of minus 2 turns construction time, for all agricultural buildings, and 100% food production at local commandery. This is amazing. So if you see recruits with farmer as their background, don't hesitate and worry about their level, their stat, or their traits. Just hire them and abuse this assignment to help you build up your peasantry income and food-focused commanderies. Then we have surplus distribution from the village chief, which provides 12k population growth per turn at the cost of 6 reserves for 5 turns. This is pretty bland, as population growth is readily available in the game, and largely depends on your public order. So if your public order is down the drain, this will not be enough to overturn that. And if you compare this to farmer's assignment, then it just makes it look worse. Moving on, we have 6 backgrounds from generic commanders. They are Magistrate, Officer, Outsider, Peacekeeper, Preacher, and Scout. Unlike the two classes we just discussed, there are three backgrounds for the commander that have 10 points in authority. And this is great news, as commanders make the best prime minister air and faction leader given their high authority stat. And the three background here that provides 10 points in authority will only help you increase overall satisfaction throughout your faction. The secondary boost here is really irrelevant as all three are equally good. However, commander really shines in their faction-wide bonuses. As we already stated, they make the best prime minister, heir, and faction leader because of their high authority stat and their skill tree, which provides the most boost in these roles. Starting with the magistrate, you have 5% boost to all income sources. This is probably the best income boosting bonus from all the backgrounds in the game, so I do recommend this one. Overall, this is probably also the best late game boost you can have from your background. Once your base income values are very high, 5% boost across the board will impact your economy greatly. 
Next, we have the Officer, which boosts six points of morale factor wide. Now, morale is important, but six points is very hard to justify on giving up the Heir slot or the Prime Minister slot. Next, we have the Outsider, which reduces corruption by 5% faction wide. This is very good in the mid game, as your buildings are not yet strong enough to counteract the growing corruption as your empire expands. But if you build smartly, especially if you follow my corruption guide, then by late game, this will be relevant. So this background is solid in the mid game, but completely useless in the early and super late game. Next, we have the Peacekeeper, which adds four points of public order faction wide. This is a great background bonus. Public Order is one of the most restrictive stat in the game. It limits your population growth and prevents you from effectively building tall in a lot of commanderies. There are very few ways to play around it as you have to waste precious building slots to counteract Public Order with costly temple buildings. If you try to farm rebellions, which is an effective strategy, it still hinders your population growth in those commanderies and makes cities less effective overall. So 4 points here from Peacekeeper background for a generic character is quite good. Lastly, we have the Scout background which adds 50 line of sight to your commandery. While the Fog of War in this game is a bit oppressive, I don't think this is a game relevant bonus. More likely, the developers just threw this bonus in here for thematic reasons, as the background is called Scout. Out of all these, I would recommend the Magistrate, Outsider, and Peacekeeper. And since commanders are naturally the best for Prime Minister, Heir, and Faction Leader roles, these three backgrounds are particularly great choices. Moving on, we have the Preacher here, which is the spying background. Like the other spying backgrounds so far, it adds 10 points to maximum cover. Not much to add here, so let's continue by looking at our two unique assignments. First, we have Public Appeasement from Peacekeeper. This assignment adds 8 points of public order at the cost of 6 reserves a turn. This is an okay assignment at best, and if you look down at the other assignment here, then you quickly realize this assignment is trashed here, because exercise government authority from the preacher background gives you 15 points of public order for 5 turns with no reserve penalties. So this seems like a bad game design, as the preacher assignment outclasses the peacekeeper assignment by a mile. Next up, we have the six backgrounds from the Vanguard class. They are Gorilla, Militant, Inspector, Hunter, Warrior, and Partisan. Once again, we'll start by highlighting the two backgrounds with 10 points of instinct. They are the Hunter and the Warrior. All of these two, the Hunter is better suited for the battlefield as the secondary stat is Resolve, which is more battle relevant than authority points from the Warrior. Continuing to their faction-wide bonuses, we have the five backgrounds here. Although I have to say, vanguards make for one of the worst prime minister, era and faction leader roles as their skill tree have very few bonuses for these roles. But regardless, let's quickly look through these. Starting with the militant, which provides 10 charge bonus for shot cavalry. This is not great, but it's also not bad. And moving on quickly, we have inspector, which lowers mustering turn by one. This is pretty bad, as there are many other ways to gain much more mustering turns than this. Next up is the hunter which adds 5 military supplies while you're in enemy territory. This is decent for long marches or long sieges, but you really shouldn't get yourself in those situations, so it's a bad bonus. Next is the warrior, which adds 9 points of morale when attacking. This is probably the best one out of the 5, but still terrible as it's situational and morale is really not worth a slot, which you only have 3 of. Lastly, we have the partisan, which adds 10 military supply with no restriction, so once again, a game design uh, flaw here, as it's on balance when compared to the Hunter bonus in every way. And like the Hunter bonus, military supply boost is still terrible. So I can't recommend any of these backgrounds, and you also shouldn't really let a generic vanguard become your prime minister, heir, or faction leader. Moving on, we have the spy background in Gorilla, which like all spy backgrounds so far, adds 10 point to maximum cover. Finally, we get to the meat of the vanguard class with its two unique assignments from Gorilla and the Militant background. From the Gorilla, we have the Organized Gorilla assignment, which increases attrition to enemy force and local commandery by 15%. This is probably irrelevant, although it looks great on paper, because if you think about it, most healthy enemies that enter your territory, that are enemies, will be attacking your settlements right away. And those who are already injured and too scared to attack and wander around 
will be too injured to win anyways. So adding attrition to those units is just the win more measure. So overall, probably not as useful as you think for the gorilla assignment. The assignment that's actually good from the Vanguard class comes from the militant background with the military requisition assignment, which lowers recruitment costs by 15% for five turns at a cost of six reserves per turn to use. You can easily plan out your recruitment turns ahead of time and pop this assignment in the commandery that you have the conscription building a turn ahead and just use one turn of this assignment and only six reserve to pump out an army of cheap, high-level new recruits. It does take a bit of micromanagement to pull this off, but in the early game when you don't have that much money, and in the late game when you want to recruit those super expensive premium unit, this assignment will be super handy. So in terms of backgrounds for vanguards, I can only recommend you to keep an eye out for the militant background for assignment use. All the other background really is irrelevant here for vanguards. You're really just recruiting vanguard for their shock cavalries anyways. So continuing, we finally arrive at the strategist class with the academic, advisor, tactician, mediator, rogue, and manipulator backgrounds. Like the commander class, the strategist class here have three backgrounds with 10 points to their primary stat of cunning. They are the visor, mediator, and manipulator. All three of the secondary stat here are decent as they're either the morale giving authority stat or the melee evasion providing expertise stat. And really, you don't really care about these secondary stat boosts. You really just want the high cunning stat for the extra ammo on your strategist. Moving on, we have five background here that have faction wide bonuses. Strategists and champions are probably the second tier for your prime minister, heir, and faction leader after the commander class, so you should pay extra attention to these bonuses. First off, we have academic, which adds 10% experience to all characters. This is pretty bad, as it has the same effect as the school building, which is a much smaller investment, as you can build it in any commandery, while you can only have three precious slots to utilize this background bonus. Next up is the visor, which gives the exact same bonus. I think it's super lazy on the part of developers to use the same boost here. So let's move on to the tactician, which adds one starting rank to all new recruit. This is just average, as we had a bonus that added two ranks and we didn't think highly of that one either. Next we have the mediator, which adds 10% to commerce income. This is not as good as the 15% to industry income we had earlier, because not only are industry income base values much higher, the multipliers for industry income is also hard to come by when compared to the commerce income. So lastly, we have the Rogue background, which adds two rank to all range unit. This is another average bonus. So overall, none of these bonuses really stand out. So I actually would now rank the commander first for uh, faction wide roles for uh, prime minister, heir and faction leader, and then probably the champion class as the second best and strategist as the third best. Uh, if you're confused by this, uh, just consult the reform guides and the generic class guides and you can get a full picture on how you should consider picking your uh, prime minister, heir, and faction leader. So moving on, uh, once again, we have one background that provides 10 points to maximum cover uh, for spying in the manipulator. This is actually super disappointing after going through all five classes and doing research for this guide, as none of the spying bonuses are different. I feel like the spying mechanism has a real promise but still has a lot of room for improvement and it's missing a lot of things. Like if the developers made spies more powerful and you could do more moves with them and make it easier to gain things with them, it not only opens up options for you as a player, it also opens up options for the AI and you actually be more actively engaged in not only planning out your spying moves, but also how to counter espionage. Nowadays, it's mostly an ignored mechanism and just sending one out, you, if you get a good success out of it, you probably have it lay low for a long time to gather up points, and then you only have them do a few things. Sometimes it could be really fun. You could be assassinating enemy leaders, triggering civil wars, but most of the time, it's pretty much nothing. Anyways, let's save all this complaining for another video. Uh, lastly, we have to cover the two unique assignments from the strategist background. First, from the tactician background, we have increased provisions, which adds military supplies to local armies. This is a really backward bonus. Uh, what I mean by that is that since most of your armies in your own territory should already have full supplies, the only time when this is relevant is when you just come out of a long siege and your army who has depleted their supplies took a city. 
but it's super low on supplies. So you sent this assignment in to boost your supply count so your army can move out again. But even in this situation, which is a very small situation, the city you took must be low on supplies or have no supplies because you just sieged them out. So by costing reserve here for this assignment, you either can't use this assignment at all because you don't have any reserves in the city, or you're going to end up using up all the reserves in the city to boost military supplies. And when you have low reserves in the city, you lose military supplies from the armies in that commandery. So either way, it's catch-22, and you end up screwed no matter how you approach this assignment. So I think it's pretty bad. Next up is counter-espionage from the manipulator background. This is a spy defense bonus, like the name suggests. It adds 10 cover costs extra for each enemy spy action. Like I mentioned here before, the best defense against enemy spies are a careful recruitment strategy. So this only slows down the enemy spies and doesn't prevent their action. So they're going to hit you later than they usually does, which is pretty worthless in my opinion. So it turns out there really isn't a good background from the strategist class. And you just probably focus on high cunning stats and good traits like burns when hiring new strategists and ignore the backgrounds as generic ones are pretty bland and overall pretty bad. So this concludes our guide here, uh, but don't close the video. There's a surprise at the end. Please sit still and listen. First of all, I hope you enjoyed it. I do not plan on doing a similar overview guide for semi-unique and unique backgrounds as I feel like an overview does not do them justice. Instead, I will take the backgrounds on semi-unique characters listed right here and do a short lore video on the history of that character to explain why they're given that background in the game and make an argument for why that character deserves or doesn't deserve a unique portrait in future DLCs. I feel like this will be a more interesting way to look at it and allow me to do a lot more shorter lore videos. As you can see here, there's 47 of these portraitless semi-unique characters in the game. So comment below and let me know whose background story you would like to hear first. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.